Good morning. We will pay attention to VAT today. What is the difference between VAT input, VAT output and VAT control? If we look at VAT input, on all expenses that you pay, whether it's water, electricity, telephone, rent, you will pay VAT. The VAT is included in the cost for the expense. If you purchase assets, whether it is a delivery vehicle, furniture, equipment, you will pay VAT because the VAT is included. VAT included in assets and costs incurred by the trader is called VAT input. The VAT input can be claimed back from SARS and the money will be paid back to the business. Because SARS owes this money to the trader, it is VAT input because it's the VAT that was paid when expenses were paid and when assets were purchased. And this VAT input is an asset because it will cause an inflow of money in the future. The assets and expenses that you record in your ledger accounts or in the financial statements will exclude VAT. So no expense in your income statement will include VAT. It excludes the VAT. Because the VAT is claimed back from SARS, the VAT doesn't form part of the cost of the asset and the expense because you receive it back from SARS. VAT output is when you are a registered VAT vendor, you will sell goods or you will render services to customers. When you sell these goods, the selling price must include VAT. Because the business must collect VAT on behalf of SARS. If you render a service, then you will also include VAT in the uh, money that you receive because you collect the VAT on behalf of SARS. VAT collected on sales or on income is included in the selling price and is called VAT output. VAT output must be paid to SARS. So it's money that's owed to SARS and therefore VAT output is a liability. The sales in, and income in your income statement will exclude the VAT because the VAT that was charged on the sales or the income does not belong to the business. It is paid over to SARS, so it will not form part of your sales or income account in the ledger or in the financial statements. If we look at the VAT control account, the control account is the account where you will take the balance of your VAT input account and the balance of your VAT output account and you will transfer the balancing figures to the VAT control account. If the amount payable to SARS on VAT that is collected from your customers is then reduced with the amount that you can claim back from SARS. So the amount that you collect on behalf of SARS from your customers is the amount that you owe to SARS. Then you will work out how much money can you claim back from SARS for the VAT that you paid on expenses and assets purchased. And the two amounts is deducted from each other to determine what is the balancing figure in the VAT control account. If this balance is a credit balance, it indicates that it is a liability that indicate that the amount is owed to SARS and the business will have to pay money to SARS. If the balancing figure is a debit balance, it is an asset, that means that SARS must pay money back to the entity so the business will receive money back from SARS in the future and they will not have to pay in that specific month. If we look at the difference between the VAT input and VAT output, VAT input is the VAT that on cost incurred, so when you pay expenses or when you buy assets. This VAT can be claimed back from SARS and therefore it is an asset. VAT output is included in the sales price or in income 
this must be paid to SARS because you collected the money from the customers on behalf of SARS and because the money must be paid out in the future, it is a liability. If the VAT payable is bigger than the VAT input, then it is a liability. If the VAT input is bigger than the VAT output, then it's an asset because SARS will have to pay money back. The amount that is payable to SARS is calculated as the amount received by them on sale of goods or services rendered minus the portion of the VAT that they can claim back on expenses paid or goods purchased. The effect of VAT on transactions. VAT output is a liability. That is the amount that's owed to SARS because you collect money on behalf of SARS. So that output will increase on the credit side because the liability increases on the credit side. The transactions that will have effect on the VAT output that must be paid to SARS will be if you sell goods for cash or on credit, if you render services cash or credit, if bad debt is recovered, then you have to pay VAT to SARS again. If there's an income, whether it's rent income, commission received, any income, you will collect VAT on behalf of SARS. If you cancel settlement discount that was allowed and the check came back dishonored, then you will cancel the discount and that means you have to pay to SARS again. And if the owner takes goods for its own use, the owner has to pay VAT on the goods taken and that will have an effect on VAT output. VAT output will decrease on the debit side because the liability decreases on the debit side. So if discount is allowed, it means that you don't collect the VAT on behalf of SARS, so it will reduce the amount that you owe to SARS. If you write off bad debts, it means that on the amount that's written off, you didn't collect VAT on behalf of SARS, so it will reduce the amount. And debtors allowances or sales returns will also reduce the amount that you owe to SARS. VAT input is an asset. <coughs> that is the amount that can be claimed from SARS. And the VAT input will increase on the debit side because the asset increases on the debit side. You can claim money back from SARS when you buy goods for cash or on credit, whether it's inventories, consumables, stationary packing material, cleaning material, anything that you buy to use or to sell in the business, you can claim the VAT back from SARS. If you buy non-current assets, whether you pay cash or credit purchases for equipment, machinery, delivery vehicles or furniture, it means that you can claim back the VAT input on that non-current assets bought. When you pay expenses, you pay VAT on it and you can claim back the VAT on the expenses. So on all the expenses, you will claim back VAT from SARS and that will increase your VAT input on the debit side. VAT input can decrease on the credit side because the asset decreases on the credit side for creditors allowances because now you're sending goods back so you can't claim that VAT on the goods anymore and if you receive discount. VAT exempted items is rates that you pay on your property because rates is already a tax. Salaries and wages is exempted because you pay pay as you earn on salaries and wages. Interest is exempted, so whether you pay interest or you receive interest, there's no VAT included in interest. And petrol, there's a lot of taxes charged on petrol, so VAT is not charged on petrol. Entries that have no influence on VAT. When you invest money, you take money out of your bank, one bank account and deposit it into another bank account. So there is no VAT involved in an investment. 
or on the date when the fixed deposit matures and they pay the money back to you. If you obtain a loan, you will transfer money from the bank to your normal bank account and if you pay installment, you will transfer money from your normal bank account to your loan at the bank. So it's a movement from money from one account to another. So there's no VAT on the loan obtained or the installment on the loan. When we receive money from debtors or we pay money to creditors, there's no effect on VAT. The effect will be on discount allowed or discount received from creditors, bad debts written off, bad debts recovered, but not when the money is paid that that debtors owe. Because you already recorded the VAT when you sold the goods or you purchased the goods. Now that VAT plus the amount that they owe to the business is paid. Therefore, there is no influence of VAT on money received from debtors or money paid to creditors. If the owner takes goods for its own use, there will be VAT because he has to pay VAT on the goods that he's taken, so it will have an effect on VAT uh, output. But if the owner takes money from the business, it's taking money, his own money out of the business, then there is no VAT involved. If the owner contributes capital to the business, it is a movement of money from his personal bank account to the account of the business, so there is no VAT included. Please pay attention to these entries that have no influence on VAT. So, in an investment or fixed deposit, a loan, installment on a loan, and the interest on a fixed deposit or on a loan, there is no VAT influence. If you receive money from a debtor or you pay money to a creditor, there's no effect on that. The money that the owner takes for himself is his own money that he takes out of the business and he puts it into his private bank account. If the owner contributes capital, he takes money out of his own account, put it into the account of the bank, so there's no effect on that.